Hey friends, Will here. Um, I've been asked a few times in the past what equipment I use to shoot my videos and how I put together my tutorials. In this video, I'm gonna take you behind the scenes in my new Office Come Studio, show you the equipment that I use to record my tutorial videos, the programs that I use, how I do my screen sharing, etc. cetera. Um, and I've also got a great set of assets to share with you specifically designed for making tutorials. So come on into the studio. So first of all, let's talk a little bit about uh, the camera that I'm using. So here we have the Sony a7 III, which I've been using for the last two years to shoot my videos. However, this is gonna be probably the last video that I shoot with this because I've just got the a7S III, which is what I'm being shot with right now. I've got the camera in a half cage just because it makes it a bit easier to then mount this monitor which is the 5.2 inch Atomos Shinobi which is great just helps me to monitor so I can set up and, and compose my shot which is helpful. The lens I use for pretty much all my tutorials I love this thing is the Sigma Art 24mm f1.4 and I'm shooting at about f2 for my videos to get that nice depth of field and then the mic that I use for my tutorials is the Rode Wireless Go with the Rode Lav Go as well now I'm actually wearing that now and that's what you're listening to but normally it would be hooked up to this camera um, the reason I use a lav instead of a shotgun mic although I'd prefer to use a shotgun mic when I'm doing my tutorials, I'm obviously, sometimes I'm facing the screen and then other times I turn to camera. So in order to give you consistent audio, no matter where I'm facing, um, I like to use a lab. It seems to work slightly better for me. Um, so that's the camera, mic um, and monitor. Um, then next to the camera here, we've got this newer C stand, uh, which has been a great addition. I put off buying a C stand for ages, but since I've bought it, I've realized just how great it is, even though it's not the most exciting purchase. Um, and on top of this C stand, I'm using the Wheelight Ninja 400, which is a bi-color COB LED light. I've reviewed that light, it's on my channel, so I'll put a link for that so you can check that out if you're interested. And I'm diffusing that light with the Lofus 70 centimeter parabolic softbox. I've got the two layers of diffusion in there and the grid to stop any overspill. Um, I've set that to 5600 Kelvin, so daylight, and it's on about, it's on 29% output, so nowhere near the maximum uh, output that's needed. Um, in addition to that, uh, just over here, I've got this mic stand, and on top of that, we've got this, uh, which is the Lupo Smart Panel Dual Color. I've got the soft diffuser on it. It's only on quite low um, and it's running on a Sony MPF 970 battery. This one I've got set to 2500 Kelvin, so it's a nice warm light. And what this does is it just gives me a little bit of a hair light when I'm sat at my desk. Um, it just gives me that nice little bit of separation from the background. And then obviously my desk, I've kind of set my desk up so it's a practical workspace, but also kind of forms the backdrop for my videos. So I've got my shelves with some little trinkets and bits and bobs on, um, but also I've got the Philips Hue uh, light strip mounted under there and a Philips Hue Go spotlight on top of the shelf. And that just helps to give me some kind of practical light and obviously a bit of color, which I quite like, I, I think, you know, makes my videos feel sort of nice having those there. As far as the uh, desk, you can see this is a bit of an Ikea <laughs> shop in the office. I've, not, I've got the Ikea desk. I've also got this uh, Calax over here, which stores all of my equipment and the Ikea trolley here, which is really helpful for certain types of videos, not so much for the tutorial stuff, but um, it's really great if you need to sort of pull your laptop into shot and we have my notes or whatever there. So that's um, been a really great addition. Um, so you can see I'm using 
this is a 2017 iMac 5K, 27 inch. This is the 4.2 gigahertz quad core Intel Core i7, and it's got 16 gigabytes of DDR4 RAM and got a one terabyte uh, hyperdrive but I don't obviously edit from the storage. And then next to that, I've got this 27 inch, uh, this is 2550 by uh, 1440, so not, not 4K, um, fairly cheap 27 inch Acer monitor. You can't buy this monitor anymore. I've had it for ages, so it's probably due um, a bit of an upgrade, but it's great as just a second monitor. Now, when I'm shooting my tutorials, um, I don't really use this monitor. If I was editing normally, this would be like my preview window. But when I'm screen recording, um, I tend to have everything on the main Mac screen because obviously I wanna record the screen and it, and it works better that way. And then the other thing, the other piece of the puzzle is the Drobo 5D, which is just down here. So that's a five bay beyond raid storage. And that has got five normal hard drives and then it's got a 60 gigabyte uh, SSD SATA drive which acts as kind of a, um, a, a hot cache drive which helps it. So I find I can edit 4K projects directly from the Drobo and it also acts as like my backup and archive for all of my finished client work and YouTube videos. Um, so yeah, I edit directly from the Drobo um, and that's it. So now, I will take a seat and talk to you about how I actually record my tutorials. So the first question that many people ask is, what software am I using to do my screen capture? And the answer is, rather boringly, I'm using QuickTime Player, which is the free piece of software that comes on your Mac. And what you do is you open QuickTime Player and then you say File, new screen recording, and then in the options, you can choose where you want to save it to. Um, there's an option to choose your microphone. I just use the built-in microphone um, on the Mac because I'm not actually using that audio. I'm only using it um, as scratch audio to sync with my main audio from the camera. And then you can also have show mouse clicks. So it puts a little sort of circular highlight in the recording, which is quite nice, so I have that on. And then you choose, from these options, you choose record entire screen. You can then choose which monitor, I don't know if you can see that, um, it jumps across, so I obviously choose my main monitor. And when you click on that, it then starts the screen uh, capture. So now we're recording that. So I will do my tutorial in Final Cut. So, and at this point, I'm obviously recording the main footage on the A7 III with my good audio from my Rode Wireless Go. I've got my screen being recorded with slightly crappy audio from the built-in microphone in the Mac. And then when you've finished your tutorial, you click Stop up at the top here and it's gonna open up that screen recording, which you can then save and import into Final Cut Pro. And I'm now ready to import my A cam footage from the Sony and my screen share footage into Final Cut and start building my tutorial. Here we've got um, my library from a recent tutorial, and once I've imported the footage, and this is the important bit, um, we're gonna select our A footage from the camera, and then we're gonna command and click the screenshot footage as well, and then we're gonna right click on that, and we're gonna say new multicam clip, and we're gonna say use audio for synchronization, we can name it if we want to, and we're gonna say okay. That's gonna sync those clips together, and it's gonna create a new multicam clip. So I've already put the multicam clip onto the timeline down here. I'm just gonna get rid of the audio here, there we go. Um, and what we can then do is we can use Command Shift 7 and we can open the multicam viewer here which shows us both of our clips. And then what we can do is we can set the audio to only ever use our main camera so the A cam, as it were, and if you do uh, option and click on the A cam, then what that will do is it will make 
the whole clip, the whole amount of footage, use the audio from our ACAM, and then we can then change this over to the video here, and then as I'm watching this, I can decide which camera I want you to be seeing as the viewer. So if I do uh, option click now on my face, that's now changed the entire clip to be using the ACAM footage. And then as I watch this back, I can just click on whichever angle I want to change to. And as I click on my um, screenshot here, you can see on the timeline, it's put a cut in where it's switched over to the screenshot. And then if I wanted to go back to my face, click back on my face, and you can see on the timeline, it's put another cut in where I want it. You can also use the number keys on your keyboard. So if I press uh, one, it will add a cut to camera one, which is in this instance, the screen share, and then use the two key, which will cut back to my face. So it's really convenient if you're sort of watching back your footage, once you've got it imported, you can really easily chop and change between which camera angle you're using. So then my process is to essentially go through the tutorial and essentially switch from the screen back to the ACAM where I'm addressing you um, and back to the screen, etc. Um, but now this is where we get to how can we elevate this and take it to the next level and make it look really professional. Um, and that is where the sponsor of today's video, Motion VFX, comes into play. So Motion VFX have recently launched a brand new pack of assets called M Tutorial, and this is a set of tools and assets to help you to really elevate the editing of your tutorial videos. And uh, I've been using this pack for a few weeks now, and there's definitely loads of features that I'm gonna implement into my future tutorials. Um, Yes, this is a sponsored video, and yes, there is an affiliate link down in the description, but please let me assure you that I would not be recommending this pack to you if I didn't think that the quality of the assets was really great um, and that this is a really useful pack if, like me, you're making tutorials for YouTube videos. So let's jump back into my screen um, and let me show you some of the ways. So as I said before, we've already cut our tutorial and uh, we've got the, the sort of FaceTime sections and the screen sections as we want them. And then look, if in my titles browser here on the left, we've got M Tutorial, and look at all of these cool assets that come in this pack. Now I'm not gonna run through all of them, I'm just gonna show you a few of them um, that I think you might like and some of the ones that I find quite useful. Um, so, I've dropped a few of them onto the timeline so that you can see actually. So the first one is the magnification. So this looks like this. There you go. So it's this circle here that you can see and we can click on this and we can really easily drag it around to whatever area of the screen we're trying to highlight. It renders nice and quick. So you can see, there you go easily adding a sort of a circle of magnification. The next one is um, the blurred frame effect. I really like this. So if you wanna sort of get people to focus on one area of the screen during a tutorial, I like to use this one. So really nice there, I'm using it there to show the um, effects browser in Final Cut, so that's really nice. I quite like this one as well, which is the highlight. And it's like the magnification one, but it sort of brings up a circle. And you can see all of these effects have really nice um, parameters within the inspector window. So you can change color, shape, size, speed. You know, they're really easy to use. Um, we've got a highlight area circle. This is quite a nice one as well, if you wanna highlight you know, which button to press or something like that. Kind of gets rid of all of the distractions that you might otherwise have, so that's 
definitely nice. Um, and then we've also got this zoom, which I'm just going to move over here for a second. So we drag our zoom on and what it will do is it allows us to zoom in. Now I use this one a huge amount, not just on like a tutorial like this, but also just on like a FaceTime if I want to zoom in a bit closer to make some sort of really salient point, you know, and then I can zoom out again. So yeah, this zoom is really great and you just drag it onto your timeline and then if you click on it, you can literally choose where you want the focus to be, where you want the zoom in to be, and you can also adjust how much of a zoom it actually adds, like so, which is really nice. So we could do like a mega zoom on like, you know, these bits of footage here, like so. So a really nice tool there. Um, what else have we got? The other thing is, you know, you can stack these assets and actually use more than one at a time. So for example, here, I've used the highlight area circle, uh, which is, uh, looks like this. But I've also used the zoom to further zoom the screen in even more. So that's quite nice. We've got this highlight square, super helpful for, again, highlighting something on the screen. And then as well, this pack really, you know, so far the things I've shown you are really around the ones that I use for making a, a tutorial for Final Cut Pro, which help you to zoom in on certain areas of the screen or highlight important things. But this pack also comes with loads of other assets that are really helpful just for a YouTube channel or business videos um, in general. So for example, I've quickly styled this lower third, which I think looks really nice. And we've also got things like pointers. So look here, I've added a zoom and then I've added a pointer so I can, you know, highlight something that I'm telling you to click on as, a, as an example. And then this is a nice feature as well. We've got shortcuts. So this is a quick way to add like which keyboard shortcuts you're pressing. So you can see there and you can style these, change the fonts, change the colors, change the obviously the shortcuts in there. But anything that's kind of, you know, keyboard based, it's a really nice tool and a nice way to present that. And again, it's just about, you know, elevating the quality of the tutorials and making sure that the knowledge you're trying to share with people is coming across in a nice clear and concise way so yeah so there's loads of stuff in this pack um, lots of cool things I can't obviously share them all with you now um, but yeah lots of nice things um, and yeah so that is how I make my YouTube videos what equipment I'm using the tools I'm using the software that I'm using and some really cool assets from motion VFX to get you started or elevate the tutorials that you're making. Um, I'll put links in the description to absolutely everything, uh, the pack from Motion VFX and the equipment that I'm using as well. There will be affiliate links, um, but you know, just so you know. Um, so yeah, I hope you found that interesting um, and maybe fun. Um, if you did, hit the like button. And other than that, thank you very much for watching and um, I'll see you next time.